How you doing everyone? It's Kevin. Uh, I'm here with another video. We're going to be working on my uh, table for the outside of my uh, 6x10 cargo trailer camper. So um, I just come up with a couple brackets here that I'm going to, I'm hoping it's pretty simple. I didn't want anything complicated, just something simple to put on the outside so we can cook a little bit. Uh, give us a little table to cook on to, you know, just to do our cooking on. So uh, I got some of the brackets. I'll show you what I'm building everything out of and uh, what I'm going to be using as a tabletop. Actually, I have this uh, piece of plastic. It's three quarters of an inch thick. Um, it's solid plastic. It's pretty sturdy. Uh, so we thought we'd make a table. A good friend of mine, uh, I like telling thanks, Nate. Thanks for the piece of plastic. He helped me out getting a piece of plastic. Uh, it's a little bit scuffed up, but I think what we're going to do is, uh, my boy gave me an idea. He said, sand it down, Dad, and put some Rhino liner on it. Because I noticed when I put my uh, my stove on here, it would slide around. So, we don't want nothing sliding off, especially food. So, I might end up sanding this down and uh, putting a coat of Rhino liner on there. I thought it would be a good idea, hey. So, uh, let me show you what i got to work on here. Okay, here's the piece of plastic. Now, I got it free, so I'm not going to uh, yell about the scratches. It's got a lot of scratches in it. But if we sand it down and put Rhino Liner on it, if the Rhino Liner will stick to it, hopefully, I think it might, uh, we'll have a very nice waterproof table. We won't ever have to worry about thing rotten because it is three quarters of an inch thick. It's heavy plastic. So we're going to be rounding the corners off. Uh, we're going to be putting a handle on it so we can carry it something that we can put our hand through here and carry it And then we're going to be making the brackets to fit onto the camper So here's what I got for brackets Now these guys will be put on the trailer Let's see how this will go You're going to put one of these on like this I think that's how it goes And then another one on this side like so and then what we're hoping is we can slide these down on so far now what i might do is i'll probably weld a washer right up here so it doesn't go too far down in because we don't want it to get up into this bend right here because then you're not going to be able to turn it so what we'll do is we'll weld a washer on here and we'll take that up as far as we can i'm getting ready to clean these holes out so they move around a little easier and then these two guys well, once we get them on the camper, these two guys will be bolted on somewhere like that. And then we'll drill one hole. This is half inch down. We'll drill a hole through our plastic. So this, when we swing it out, we can lock our plastic right into that one hole. That's what we're hoping for anyhow. And then if I use two of these guys, one on each side, uh, it should work out now the thing is is a lot of this stuff like even like my antenna bracket I put on was made out of steel and uh, They'll rust so I got them sanded down pretty good and uh, uh, I'm gonna primer everything up make sure it's painted good and hopefully we keep this stuff from rusting away but anyhow those are the brackets we're gonna be using and that's the plastic we're gonna be using so I'm going to get on getting a washer that will fit on this guy and I got to get these cleaned out because we're going to be putting painted down in there. I was just going to take that Dremel and clean these out real good to make sure we have plenty of room for them to slide in and out pretty smooth. So I think we'll get it done here. Well, let's get working. All right, I'm going to get ready to weld a washer on here, but what I've done, this is a half inch dowel. This is just half inch dowel rod that I bent. Now, what I've done is I took a, a half inch socket, and that's perfect. It fits in there just perfect, and I want this washer to be good and flush. I want it to be straight on there, so I just took that down through the vise here just a little bit, and... Uh, I want to make sure that my wa or my washer stays flat. I don't want it to be crooked on there. 
I want it to be flat so I just put it down on there like that and I'll just put a couple tacks on it and this should work out just fine for holding that washer in place until I get it welded. I'm going to need a couple little tacks on there. I might finish out around the outside edge, wire brush it down, finish it out, but you'll need a lot of weld on them. Not holding a lot of weight. All right, now I just got my camper level and I took this screw out and this screw over here out. There's two screws, I just took them out. Now it's a little bit wet today, but what we're going to do is we're going to try to mount our brackets back in these same holes. So I'm going to use some self tappers a little bigger heavier self tapper because we're going to be holding the table up and I'm just going to screw my brackets in here and see if I can get these guys uh, where I want them sit that way I can take it all back off and paint it and then put it back on so that's what we're going to do now we're going to work on getting those uh, top two brackets in there okay now as you can see here we're using a pretty good size screw it's a lot bigger than the screws that are already in there. And we're going to put this guy upside down. We want the washer on the top. The other one will actually mount the same way, but down this way a little bit. So let's see if we can get this guy to screw in here and see if it'll tighten up. I think these are going to tighten up pretty good. I don't want to put them too tight right now because I want to put the brackets down in there and then line up my bottom one. So I'll go ahead and get the other one like this mounted on and then we'll go ahead and put the bottom ones on. So that's where our little metal brackets, these little guys are going to slide right down inside of here. That will be what holds our table up. And then when we want to put it away, we'll slide our, our uh, little bracket out put it away the only thing will be left to our camper is these little metal brackets so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one just the same as that okay as you can see we have that little bracket on over there and we got that one on I'm gonna be putting that one on next so I just have it setting on there right now and I took a little level and stuck it on here because my trailer is level now and I got that as level as I possibly can and I stood back and looked at it too because looking at it helps you too. just stand back and look at it and make sure it looks nice on there so now all I gotta do now I put a little took a little permanent marker and marked a little spot in there so I'm just gonna get my bolt hopefully I can hold this thing still enough to get it in there without moving it Now I'm just going to leave them a little bit loose so I can move them around. I'm going to get my other one set up like this. Now I put a level across this too. It's tilted down just a little bit, but I could always bend it up just a little bit for a little to make it better there. But I don't think it's going to hurt tilted just a little bit. So now we got one bracket on. This thing will swivel in and out. Of course it's not tight yet. But we're going to work on the other one and we'll do exactly the same thing I did with this one to the other one. Okay, we have both of our holes. We have all of our holes drilled now. All the brackets are made. All we got to do is get these guys all back off. Get them primered up, wire brushed down, primered up and painted. 
we got to make sure they're painted good because they're going to be on the trailer. And we don't want rust streaks going down the side of the trailer. So we're going to get these guys back off and uh, get them painted up. Now, don't forget, all this stuff was made right here in the garage. This is just half inch solid bar. And we heat it up and bent it. This is bent three quarters of an inch high. So when I drill a hole through my table, this thing should be just about flush with my table. Both of them. And then these guys from here down to here is about four inches. So I got four inches of stabilization there, which I think is going to be fine. Uh, these are not actually tightened down now, but I do honestly think these will hold a lot of weight. Uh, but we're not going to be putting much on there besides uh, our little stove and uh, maybe a plate of food or something we're cooking off to the side. So I think we got a pretty good little set up here for a table and we'll be able to take these guys out and put them in the back of the camper and then we're ready to set our table up we'll put them back down in and uh we'll put our table up so let's get these guys back all tore apart and get them painted up Okay, we got our holes drilled in here about where we want them on the uh, brackets out there. I've been taking it out there and trying it and trying it and trying it. And I think I finally got it. Let's go out and give it a try and we'll see what this thing's going to look like. Okay, now we should be able to set this thing on here and find our little holes. And it fits on there pretty good. The only problem I can see now is it wants to move back and forth this way. So do we go back in here on one of these and drill another hole and weld another dowel sticking up just so it's flush with the table again? I'll show you what that looks like up here. You can see our holes right there is where we drilled our hole. And there's the steel beam underneath of it. And the same way with this one. But now if I had another one back here, it wouldn't twist then. It couldn't twist. So I'm debating on whether I should weld a dowel, half inch dowel back here, and drill another hole so this thing doesn't go back and forth. You wouldn't want to cook and then all of a sudden things start swaying around, that's for sure. So we're going to have to do something with it. I might do another dowel on there. I'm not sure yet. Well, I have decided to weld one more dowel on this and cut it off at the three-quarter inch mark, just like we did the tip. That way, the one on the left will have the one with the dowel on it, and that should actually keep it from twisting. So, one thing I gotta do is I gotta aim down this thing just like a shotgun and line this sh this piece up with this one. I would lay it on the table, but I don't have a whole lot of room. Maybe I can work something out here where I can get some more room, get it over on the table. But we are going to weld a piece on there because we don't want it to spin around for sure. I still haven't got anything done with this toolbox. We had got it there from Rogers Flea Market, but I need a bigger garage. I need a bigger garage. I need to, let's put this thing down on the table and see if we can get it to set a little more level. If we lay it down like this, we might be able to hold it into place a little bit better. As long as this dowel is flat on the table, I think we'll be okay. That's going to hold it 90 degrees. So as long as that thing's down pretty good right there, I think we'll be okay right there. Let's see if we can get a tack on it. I want to get this done so I can get it painted, get some paint on it. I think that right. I think it'll be okay there. Nope, turn the machine on and plug it in. Oh. Alright. Yeah, 
hopefully that will hold it there. Take this guy back off, flip it over. That looks pretty daggone good. Pretty daggone good. Yeah, better watch that stuff, guys. I'm not paying attention again here. That looks pretty nice. I'll go water brush that down and get it cut off three quarters of an inch. Just a little nub sticking out of there and we'll get us a hole drilled for that one too. Wire brush, wire brush it down, clean it up a little bit more, and this piece will be done. All right, everything's been cleaned up. I rubbed it down with some alcohol. Now we're going to just put a little paint to her. Good primer and good paint, because we want this to stick. We don't want it to be rusted up on our camper. Okay, we'll let that set up a little bit, give it some time to dry, and then uh, we'll flip them all over, coat the other side, and then we'll be ready for paint. It's going to be a pretty nice little uh, setup, I think. Nice little brackets. Not too heavy, but I think they'll work out fine. Okay, I wanted to cut this piece of plastic down, the uh, one uh, for our table here. But I wasn't sure how to cut it, so I thought maybe I'd run it across the table saw. Uh, I thought that would work. But I'm not sure if it'll just melt it or it will cut it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to nip this just a little bit of it on this corner. If anything, I just have to cut a corner off. It won't be so bad. We'll figure out that. But if it cuts real nice, I want to cut four inches off of this thing. I don't, I want to try to cut it down because it's bigger, way bigger than the stove is and it still gives me room on the side to put my food. So, let's give it a little shot and see if the table saw will cut it. To me, honestly, that looks like a perfect cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that thing through that table saw and see how it works. I think it'll be fine. So I'm gonna set my uh, thing here for four inches. I'm gonna take four inches off of that. So that'll give us a nice little tabletop. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing chopped, chopped off. Alright, we slapped a little bit of paint on this guy. This is the one I have with the two pegs on it, which will go on the left side. I've just marked it out here so I can go ahead and drill my other hole. 
on here that way when it's setting down on there it doesn't twist it won't let it twist so I'm gonna drill this and I've been drilling this with a uh, a little smaller bit at first and then I'll move it up to the half inch well, what happens is that half inch when it digs in it it'll fly through that uh, plastic I'm going to do one more size here and then we'll head for the half inch see how fast it just pulled itself through there even with that little bit bigger one now that half inch it'll really tear it up it's got the bigger twist on it you know so it wants to just tear it up you know when I first started building this thing I was actually looking for a piece of nylon uh, like you would see in these grocery stores on the cutting tables uh, I'm sure you could probably cut on this too I'm not positive about it but I would think but I was looking for a piece of nylon I thought a piece of nylon would have been great because then you could use it as a cutting table cooking table prepare table whatever you wanted let's get this half inch in Now we might have to remat out a little bit, I'm not sure, but I'll have to ream it just a little bit to get that thing to fit down in there good. It's pretty tight. We want it tight, but I'm just going to take a little bit of that edge from that weld. Because it's got that heavy weld on that upper side. That's a tight, tight fit. That might be just a little too tight. We don't want it too loose, but we don't want it too tight. We ain't never satisfied, are we? Better. Just got to keep working at it until I can get it all the way down on both sides here. See, it fits, but man, that's tight. Up oh, there it is. That's it. Fits in there perfect. It's snug, but it's not too tight. And that should keep that thing from. Uh, going back and forth this way now when the pressure's down on it. Uh, I did pick up the uh, oh the Rhino liner. I'm gonna do some Rhino liner on it. Let me show you what I picked okay, up. Okay, this is the uh, it's a duplicolor Rhino liner bed armor. Uh, it's got boats on it, so I'm taking it. It'll stick to that plastic. We're gonna we're gonna scuff that plastic up real good anyhow. So. I'm taking it'll stick to it, so hopefully we're not going in the wrong direction and have to scrape it all off, but we're going to find out for sure. All right, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to make a little handle in here so you could grab in here and pick this thing up and carry it. Uh, I think it'll make it a lot easier to carry if I got a handle on it. So I got the bottom here marked out. I'm just going to take a paddle bit. I got an inch and a half paddle bit. Actually came in uh, that toolbox. That we had got from Rogers at that flea market. I didn't have an inch and a half, but we're gonna try a paddle bit and see what happens. I got it marked out here where I want to start these guys, so we're gonna go ahead and try to get a hole put in here. Whew. Pulling on some stuff there. It's cutting good. Now what I might do is just drill some from this side I don't know it may go all the way through I'm not sure on that normally what I would do is I drill part way through until the tip come through and then drill the other side ah we'll drill the other side too we'll just get our two holes going here I might have to charge my drill bit 
There's my drill. Oh yeah. Let me get another battery and we'll flip this thing over. Get the other side. Okay, we're just we just flipped the board over and put a battery in. We'll try this side now. Okay, I think that worked out pretty well, so good thing we flipped it over. Okay, now we got our big holes there. We're just going to flip it back over. We're going to take a, a sawzall, or we'll take a, a jigsaw with a real rough blade and take the rest of that out. Okay, now that I got these uh, cut, I'm going to take the jigsaw and I got a real coarse blade, uh, like a rip blade. And I'm going to go ahead and try to cut just from there to there on both sides. Just cut that off and then I'll have my oval shape. Okay, we got a semi oval shape in there. Now I'll see what else I can do to clean that up. Maybe we could just sand that or something. I'm not sure. We'll figure it out. Maybe even a file. We'll probably take that down. Make it nice. Okay, we got our uh, cutout for our hand to go in to carry it with. Seems like it's going to work out okay. I know it's not the greatest, but it's there and I think it's gonna work just fine now to make sure I don't want the grandkids to hit their heads on this thing what I'm doing is I'm gonna take a knife and I'm gonna cut that real sharp edge off of the edge of this and I'm just gonna use a carpenter knife by sticking one finger on one side one just holding the blade and then we're gonna go down through here and we're gonna shave this little bump right off of here gonna take a little bit but we'll get it right off of there just so we don't have that real sharp edge on the corner all right we got all the edges we used a carpenter knife cleaned them up no sharp edges we don't have to worry about the kids getting hit with any sharp corners and now I'm just gonna use this uh, palm sander and go over this real good and uh, make sure we get it scuffed up. This is the underneath side. We're going to try it with the uh, uh, bed liner and see if it sticks to it first. So we're going to get this sanded down. All right, as you can see, there's no more shine to it. Uh, it looks pretty clean. I took an air hose and blew it off with an air hose. But I'm going to take a little bit of rubbing alcohol just a little bit and put on a rag and then I'll wipe it off real quick with that and uh, then we're going to try our bed liner stuff on here just like I said this is the underneath we're not going to go too crazy we want to see how it works on the underneath actually I like it sanded I, I like the sanded I honestly it wouldn't matter to me if it just stayed sanded but we're going to try it and we're going to see what happens now that alcohol dries really really fast so we're going to give our bed liner a good little shake and we're going to give it a try and see what happens here now i've never used this bed liner before but we're going to give it a try it can't be any different than painting hopefully i'm not sure but we're going to give it a try and see what happens here Okay, I'm not going to do any more than that, I don't think. I think I'm going to just leave it set there and let it dry and see what that turns out like. Meanwhile, while that uh, thing's drying over there, we're going to be putting another coat on the other side of these. We got These are our little brackets to go on the camper. And uh, we shot them with primer and uh, put one side with some paint. 
I'm gonna get them painted up. I, I want them to be pretty well coated because I'm worried about the rust. Uh, you know, I'm sure if I get a good heavy coat of paint on them, they should be good. So that's what I'm doing now. Just gonna hit them with some more paint. Make sure they're good and coated. So those are looking pretty good. Now our other pieces over here, I left them black. Now, I think I got enough paint on them. They am going to go super crazy, but I think I might have enough paint on them. I was just a little bit worried about this black down here. These will be inside the camper. The only time these will be out is when uh, the table's on. So when the table's not on, these won't be on. So I think I'm okay with these guys. I think they look pretty good so they're not actually going to get a lot of weather and they're underneath anyhow so it's just those white pieces well it's been 24 hours and the bed liner just not going to work on here i've been scratching it and it just comes right off so it's not going to stick to the plastic so we just got to take it off the underneath piece of it you can see it just peeling right off with my finger now and it's had more than enough time it should have been dry by now so we're going to go ahead and strip this off and we're going to find something else to do with it but i've been actually trying it because i got my brackets on the camper let me show you uh, let me grab one of these pins anyhow and uh i was just trying to fit them on here you can see i got these little guys on here now that's the only thing that's actually going to stay on my camper is those little guys right there and these things just fit right down in there pretty much perfect and uh, that's going to be the brace to hold up your uh, shelf your table okay everyone i figure i'd show you this thing hooking up this is going to be the last time i got to get the camper out of here we got our new air conditioner uh, we're going to put the rubber roof on it uh, we're going to change out the the uh, roof we didn't like that uh the way it was sealed up so i'm going to show you guys how this thing works now these will swivel anywhere but uh as you know that the uh bed liner didn't work on there it didn't stick so we're gonna have to find out something else and i'm gonna see maybe i'll get some ideas from you guys out there what might work on there <coughs> I'm going to show you this thing is actually super easy to hook up on here. It's a little bit tight, and that's the way I want it. Uh, but when it's locked down into place, it doesn't go nowhere now. It stays there really nice, and we just sanded it off. It's just been sanded down. It's got a dull look to it. We was trying to get it rough enough to where our uh, little stove don't slide off of there and stuff. So, But we just can't... I don't have the time to keep figure, trying to figure this out right now. I got to get the roof done. So uh, that's what it looks like. I'll give you guys a closer look. I do, like I said, I have it sanded down real good. And uh, it, it sure looks nice. And it's nice and level on there when the camper's level. It's level. I think it worked out very well. Now we might have to get some of them little sticky things to put on the bottom of the stove to keep it from sliding. I think you can get some kind of stuff like that maybe. I might have to do that. Or maybe I can find something I can glue down on here. I don't know. But it has to be waterproof. So. Well I'd like to tell everybody thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a thumbs up, thumbs down or a comment if you'd like. Till next time.